Good morning, church, and welcome to Take 5. Today we're in Acts chapter 7. I'm excited to read this one with you. It's called Stephen's Speech in Mind Scripture. That's what the little title says above this chapter. So um, let's read everything it has to say, and then we'll kind of unpack some stuff. And the high priest said, Are these things so? And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Go out from your land and from your kindred, and go into the land that I will show you. And he went, he went out from the land of the uh, Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father died, God removed him from there into this land in which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give him as a possession and to his offspring after him, through he had no child. And God spoke to, uh, to this effect, that his offspring would become sojourners in a land belonging to others who would enslave them and afflict them 400 years. But I will judge the nation that they serve, said God. And after that, they shall come out and worship me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of, covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac and circum, circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac became the father of Jacob and Jacob of the 12 patriarchs. And, after, and the patriarchs, jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt. But God was with him and rescued him with all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, who made him ruler over Egypt and over all his household. Now there came a famine throughout all Egypt and Canaan and a great affliction, and our fathers could find no food. But when Jacob heard that there was a grain in Egypt, he sent out, um, he sent out our fathers on their first visit. And on the second visit, Joseph, Joseph made himself known to his brothers, and Joseph's family became known to Pharaoh. And Joseph sent out and summoned Jacob after his, Jacob, his father, and all his kindred, seventy-five persons in all. And Jacob went down into Egypt, and, he, and died he and our fathers. And they were carried back to Shechem, and laid in the tomb that Abraham had bought for a sum of silver from the sons of Hamar in Shechem. But as the time of promise drew near, drew near when, which God had, guaranteed to, uh, had granted to Abraham, the people increased and multiplied in Egypt, until they arose over Egypt another king who did not know Joseph. He dwelt shrewdly, he dealt shrewdly, with our race and forced our fathers to expose their infants so that they would not be kept alive. At this time, Moses was born and he was beautiful in God's sight. And he was brought up for three months in his father's house. And when he was exposed, Pharaoh's daughter adopted him and brought him up as her own son. And Moses was instructed in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and he was mighty in his words and deeds. When he was 40 years old, he came into, it came into his heart to visit his brothers, the children of Israel. <clears throat> After seeking one of them being wronged, he defended the oppressed man and avenged him by striking down the Egyptian. He supposed that his brothers would understand that God was giving them salvation by his hand, but they did not understand. And on the following day, he appeared to, he appeared to them as they were quarreling and tried to reconcile them, saying, Men, you are brothers. Why do you wrong each other? But the man who was wronging his neighbor thrust him aside, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge over us? Do you want to kill me as you killed the Egyptian yesterday? At this retort, Moses fled and became an exile of the land of Midian where he became a father of two sons. Now when forty years had passed, an angel appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai in a flame of a fire in a bush. When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight, and he drew near to look. Then, he ca then came a voice of the Lord, I am the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses trembled and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off the sandals from your feet, for the place you are standing is holy ground. I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, have heard their groaning, and have come down to deliver them. And now I come, I will send you to Egypt. This Moses whom they rejected, saying, Who made you a ruler and a judge? This man God sent as both a ruler and a redeemer, by the hand of the angel who appeared to him in the bush. This man led them out, performing wonders and signs in Egypt, and at the Red Sea, and in the wilderness for forty years. This is the Moses who said to the Israelites, God will raise you up, uh, raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. This is the one who was in the congregation in the wilderness with the angel who spoke to him at Mount Sinai. And with our fathers, he received living oracles to give us. Our fathers refused to obey him, but thrust him aside. And in their hearts, they turned to Egypt, saying to Aaron, Make us gods who will go before us. As for this Moses, who led out from the land of Egypt, we did not know what, he, what had become of him. And as they made a calf in those days um, and offered a sacrifice to the idol and were rejoicing in the works of their hands, but God turned away and gave, gave them over to worship the host of heaven, as it is written in the book of the prophets. Did you bring me to be slain 
Did you bring me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god Rahim. Uh, Rephan, I guess is how you say that. The images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. Our fathers had the had the tent of wilderness in the wilderness, witness in the wilderness, I'm sorry, just as he who spoke to Moses directed him to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. Our fathers in turn brought it in with Joshua, and they disposed the nations that God drove out before our fathers. So it was until the days of David, who found favor in the sight of God and asked to find a dwelling place for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who, bought a house, who built a house for them. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit, as your fathers did. So do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels did not keep it. Now when they had heard these things, they were enraged, um, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him, and they, sorry, um, I accidentally turned two pages, um, turned a bunch of pages. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul, or as we come to know as Paul. And they were stoning Stephen. He called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against him. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. So a lot of scripture there, 59 verses. Um, but a cool a cool story is, is told here. Um, you know, Stephen's talking to these people. And I like where he goes kind of, you know, in 51, you see everyone kind of get mad. He says, you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in hearts and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Um, so just as, you know, their forefathers were killing prophets and, and stuff back in the day, he's saying, you know, you're you're still doing it now. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? Talking about that. And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. Um, Jesus. You who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. So they stone Stephen because he's, you know, just really he's just preaching the truth and, and, and it's offensive. And, and so it brings them to such anger that they end up killing Stephen. But something that's cool to note here is, is that they lay their garments at the foot of Saul, who's going to be Paul, who's going to write a lot of the books in the New Testament and is going to, you know, just be this rapid not rapid, but this uh, just profound, um, you know, person for us. I mean, he wrote like a third of the New Testament. Um, you know, he gave us so much stuff, um, or God used him to give us so much stuff. And it's just cool to see him in this picture where Stephen's being killed for professing his faith and professing the truth um, of Jesus. And then Saul's right there helping persecute him, but God's going to take this person, Saul, who was part of this, and he's going to take him and he's going to use him. And God's just going to show his power through that. Um, you know, just, just reiterating that God has sovereign power over, over everyone. And even someone who's persecuted Christians before God can turn and use as a mighty person that, that just, um, you know, can make such a big difference for the sake of the gospel. Um, I just really like that takeaway from this. Um, you know, Stephen's the first martyr, but my biggest thing is just God reiterating that he can take and use anyone um, for his name's sake. Um, you know, and, and sometimes that looks like we, we might not be obedient, but God might take someone else and they might be obedient, even someone who's unlikely. And God might reveal himself to you and say, you know, look, um, you know, I, if, if you won't worship me, then, then the rocks will cry out. You know, um, it's just cool to see God use the most unlikely people. Um, so that's my biggest takeaway from this 
this group of, of scriptures here. I know I jumbled my words a lot when trying to read that, but I hope that you guys were able to follow along with me, and I hope that you enjoyed this chapter as much as I did. Um, that's all I have for you today, so I will see you guys next week.